Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? I never grow tired of that goofy grin he gives when we start. Anyway, um, we are back in Warcraft and today we're going to carry on with our quest lines in Duskwood. But before we get down to Duskwood, we've got a quest to turn in up there for gathering the rock blossoms. And then we've got some more stuff to do over here in the Rotting Orchard. Before we get going with that, however, we need to pick our pet of the day. And today, we I've already decided which one we're going to use. We're going to use the fossilised hatchling. Because we're in the undead area, I was thinking about Mr. Grubbs because I thought that's actually quite a good one for an undead area. But we might use that later on. I'm hoping that we can do something in the plague lands and that would be much more suitable to the plague land so we're going to go with the fossilized hatchling so let me go to that one and summon and there is our pet of the day let me just run over here there we go there is a the fossilized hatchling wonderful little chap and bones i call him so let's um we're going to use the winter spring frost saber so first of all we go to the auction house and we sell anything that we've got in our bags that we want to sell. And we don't actually have very much stuff that we want to get rid of today. But before we actually sell anything, we go to the mailbox and we see what we did sell. So it doesn't look like we actually sold anything at all. Oh, no, we did. We, we've sold lots of stuff. So we had a fireproof orb that we sold for 10 gold. So we can take that. The orb of power for 7 gold. Those were some of the things that we bought from that trader that we found along the road. The rough stone for 20 gold. We sold all of the rough stone. I'm actually surprised at that. Malachite for 75 silver. The tiger's eyes as well. They were 75 silver each. The burnished girdle. That's another seven, um, 7 gold. The recipe of holy protection potion. We didn't actually manage to sell that. And we did list that for quite a lot of money, didn't we? And then the rest of the lean wolf flank. Small spider leg. Crunchy spider leg. And some recipes as well. We didn't sell any of those. So if I open all of them. There we go. Take all of those, and I will go straight back into the auction house here, and I will start relisting these items. What was that? Not you. That there. That is a is a floating skull. That is actually a really cool looking floating skull. I really like the look of that one. Okay, I have no idea where that comes from or what it is, but it's actually really cool. I really I really do like the look of that. Right, I'm going to relist these. Um, items here the potions and that uh, no the recipes rather and i don't know about the lean wolf flank what are we going to get for that no items found on there uh small spider there's only one small spider leg that we've got it's barely worth trying to list that we will list these so the seasoned wolf kebab is uh 40 gold i think we will list ours for 20 gold I'm, I'm quite happy to get 20 gold anyway i will list the rest of this stuff and i'll show you what i've sold it uh listed it for after I finish listing it all and then we can carry on with some actual questing. Well, I've listed a few items. I haven't actually listed very much. Some of these are soul bound here and I'm keeping a lot of this stuff at the moment until we've leveled up our engineering a bit higher. So I've listed three recipes at 12, two at 20, one at 15, the holy protection potion at 200 gold, a couple of, well, one cheap green at 15 gold, which is still cheap. I just took a quick look at a load of other greens and it's cheaper than most of them. And then these for a little bit. The large venom sack, 350 gold, because someone here has listed one for 391 gold. Now, I figure if maybe people want them, I don't know. But if there's any, even the slightest chance that I could get that much money for it, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And while I was actually going, someone threw me something. Is one of these here, the paper zeppelin. So what you do is you find someone like that person there who's opening his mail and is probably really not going to appreciate this and then you use it and it throws it over like that and it goes into his bag you don't actually see it hit him he does sort of move there's like a slight animation as he moves as it um jumps into his bag so yeah you, you can sort of chuck them around from one player to another some people find them really ir irritating other people quite like it it's like a, a seasonal type thing that is a very cool looking mount Look at that. What is it? It's the Luminous Star Seeker. I always, I, I, I've got a big thing for mounts. I, as you know, I, I really like mounts. So let's just take a look at Luminous Star Seeker. If I go Luminous, there we go. Uh, to get that one, oh, it's in game shop. All right. So you go in game shop, you go there, and it's not services. You just go to the mounts and you take a look. I've got the Enchanted Fey Dragon, and I've got the Armored Bloodwing. That was a birthday present to me a few years ago from Sen. And the Celestial Steed was a birthday present the year before from Sen. And so, yeah, I've got three of these items here. The Warforged Nightmare, that one there, I think is a very, very cool looking mount. Some people think it looks tacky. 
I'm personally slightly disappointed that all the other mounts are 19 gold each. Uh, 19 gold? <laughs> no, 19 pounds each. This one here is 27 pounds. I feel a, a, I feel a bit hard done by there, really. It's the coolest looking of them all, I think. And it's 27 pounds. Well, I say coolest looking of them all. You do have the Luminous Star Seeker there, which is a very, very cool looking mount. And you've also got this Mystic Rune Saber, which, again, is another fantastic looking one. And the Grinning Reaver. Look at that thing. That is fantastic. It's just awesome. Absolutely cool. That really is. I, I love that mount. But I, I, I've just got this thing for mounts in general. I, I, I like all of them. I think they're all fantastic. So um, I, it's very difficult for me to ever make a, a certain decision on just choosing one. And so, yeah, I, generally every time I see a new mount, I'm just like, oh, wow, that looks really cool. And the next one comes along. Oh, wow, that, that's really cool. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I do tend to be a bit like that. Um, kind of, kind of, yeah, fanboy. There's de definite fanboy going on there for any mounts that Blizzard might decide to throw at us. Um for me, I'm, I'm kind of like the ultimate mount fanboy. Now then, rock blossoms, we need to pick Tavern Keep Smiths. Um, hi, Grundorn. Do you have those rock blossoms for me yet? Continue. Good, you got the rock blossoms. I'll whip up the zombie juice. It's strong stuff, I warn you. Here's your zombie juice, and be careful with this stuff. It's strong enough to raise the dead. I accept. So we've got to take that back up to Abercrombie. And we've reached level 23. We didn't learn anything new at level 23, so we can just continue on our way as though nothing had happened. A little bit stronger than we were just now. So we're going to go for our war horse this time. And we're going to take this straight up to Abercrombie and see if he gives us another quest. We've got two quests over here. So he may have another quest for us to do over here before we do anything else. So if we go up there and deliver this one to him on our mighty war... See, I've never been a fan of the... I, mean, I say I like all mounts, but I've never been a particular fan of the paladin mounts. I mean, they're all right. It's just they don't sort of... They don't do it for me, personally. They, they don't really grab me. Like, the Winter Spring Frost Saber that I mounted up when I first started this episode today, that one took me hours and hours and hours of grinding. They changed the way that you gain the rep for Winter Spring um, later on, so it's now quite a simple reputation to get. But for me, it took me hours. And what I had to do was all the way over here in Winter Spring... I had to kill giants down here, and that was back when it was actually quite difficult to kill the giants. They were all elites as well. Plus, I had to kill things up here and spend lots of time running up and down and killing things over here as well. And, yeah. Actually, no, killing over there was something different. Um, so, doing lots and lots of kills and lots of different things that was going on all around winter spring and it took me a very very long time i did eventually get it and it was a rare occurrence i sat on that thing in in iron forge and i had a feeling of accomplishment and these days Hello. you don't sort of get that with the winter spring because it got so much easier to get it uh dark rider yells we will take what is ours who's the dark rider uh i don't actually know if we've got an event going on let's just hang on just let's just quick no we don't okay the Great Gnomrigan Run. What's that? Join the gnomes. They celebrate their unrelenting moxie. Race across the eastern kingdoms from Gnomrigan down to Booty Bay. Uh, okay, that could actually be quite good fun. That sounds that sounds interesting. Starts early in the morning. I'm guessing that's all day on ongoing. Oh, start, oh, it's just on the Saturday. That's just on this Saturday, that one is. Um, okay, right. Good we don't need to worry about that. So, the Battle of... Bottle of I thought it said battle of zombie juice. I thought it's a strange thing. I need that zombie juice to keep me warm in these cold dark nights. Did you get it for me? A thousand thanks, Grundorn. You warm an old man's heart with your foolish I mean with your kindness. Here you are, friend. Take this as a token of my gratitude. Ring of the Fool. I'm starting to get a little bit concerned about this. There's a few things that are being said and done that are starting to worry me just a teensy bit. A few weeks ago, I was picking herbs far from my house, and a band of ogres attacked me. I ran, and I was forced to leave behind a crate of precious tools and herbs. After they chased me off, the ogres swaggered back to the ogre mound in southern Duskwood. I'm sure my crate is somewhere near the mound. Please, Grondorn, retrieve this crate for me, for I miss it sorely. Okay. See you around. We'll go and get your crate of stolen goodies, and we will bring them back to you. So if we got... So that one's over there. It looks like we've only got the two quests there. Uh, what's going on? Dark Rider. He looks quite powerful. I'm not quite sure who that is. And he's a level 102. So it's probably a good job that he was around because I'm not sure that I'd have been able to take him on. Who is the Dark Rider? 
I've got genuine, I've got absolutely no idea what the Dark Rider thing is all about. Yes. Although there are, oh no, that's a level 26. I thought there were like lots of people running around here that are doing different things, but no, there isn't. So we'll continue on. We're going to go up the road now and, oh no, we don't want to go up there. We're going to go down to the town square first. And we're going to go to, I think it's the Tranquil Orchard that we're heading to. And once we reach a Tranquil Orchard, or, Orchard? But the Tranquil Orchard, we can start battling the Worgen, and I will meet you up there. Right, the Orchard is just across the way here. I just stopped momentarily to grab some copper that I've seen. And incidentally, if we were... I know role players who play this game, and they will role play everything, and they will literally, like, walk up the roads like this, and they will walk around the cities. Um... I like playing these games, and I like sort of trying to get into them, but... That is a step too far for me. So I, I'm, I got nothing against people role playing. I got. I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing. It's just I'm saying I couldn't do it. I, there's no way that I could just sit there and watch me walk really slowly all the way up like that. It would just I would, it would just drive me insane. It really would. I, I don't. I genuinely don't think that I could do that. It just. It's. It's just not something that would be for me. Now, if we go into this house here, we can get this one and that one there, and wallop them with the shields there we go we are back in business we are back on the case battling each other again oh we've got some ore of some sort up here i'm not quite sure which one it is we have a nightbane stalker busy trying to take us down can i get the it's iron i'm not going to be able to get it am i no and now we can't get it because that person has taken it while we were battling but you can sometimes now ah uh, there we go they do actually leave it there longer. We've got iron ore nuggets and not actually iron ore because our um, mining is not high enough to actually level iron efficiently. So we get nuggets instead of actual iron ore. It's um, it's a way that you can mine all of it, but um, at the same time you don't you can't sort of gain masses of resources that are above your level. So we've got these. We turn ten nuggets into one piece of iron ore. So if we find iron ore, we can mine it, and we can do stuff with it. It's just that it's going to take a lot longer to actually build up to it. So let's just go in here and find whatever it is that we need to find in here. Nightbane Shadow Weaver. So we can take care of him. Now, what is it that we're after in here? Oh, it's something down here. What's this? Pile of scraps. Oh, the torn journal. I remember now. We take that one. And that one can be taken back. And we've also got a bit of ore up there, which is... Oh, that's just copper. Well, I say just copper. It's actually worth quite a lot of money. Each individual piece of copper ore seems to sell for an absolute fortune. Well, well, I, well I say absolute fortune. I mean, uh, a, even a couple of gold each, by my standards at the moment, is an absolute fortune. I, do, I don't mean me personally, um, my standards, because... Um, like yesterday when I opened my bags on my actual bank character, I unloaded, I think it was 125,000 gold. So my own personal standards, it isn't a huge amount. Um, and I don't actually worry about it. But by the standards of our character, by assuming that we're a brand new character and we've never played before, we do get a lot of money. We can get like two gold per piece of copper ore and we get 50 silver per piece of rough stone. Which absolutely amazes me. I'm, I'm genuinely staggered that we could get that much kind, that much cash for just rough stone. That is something that really does surprise me. Now there is another piece of ore here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. So we've got some nightbane shadow weavers here that we can take care of for a minute. There we go. There's another one. And there was a there's some ore here somewhere that I was chasing. Tin vein. Where is it? It's behind this house, I'm betting. There it is. Tin is very good. We've got our engineering. We'll probably do a bit of engineering next week. I think we might do that at the beginning of the episode. We'll quickly take care of our auctions, and then we will go and deal with some tin as well. So let's just take that one out there. And there's actually a cave here. I don't know how deep this cave is. Does it go in any very far? Some caves, you have the huge big, big caves. Right, there's nothing in there, really. And then other caves are just small and very quickly dealt with. The Black Stallion. You now get this one in Stormwind, but it used to be that you could only locate the Black Stallion in Menethil Harbour. Um, it was just one trader that sold you the Black Stallion. It was, it, it, 
unless you sort of, if you knew the game reasonably well, you'd soon be able to find it without any trouble. But it was one of those mounts that was um, a little bit off the beaten path for a lot of people. And so I was, I was quite pleased. I'm quite glad that I found this one. Um, you still got to have the Stormwind rep for it. It just, um, it was, it was slightly different, and I was always quite pleased about that. So it, 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 it's always sort of had a little bit of fondness for me um, personally. Oh, we got attacked there. Um, that the Black Stallion, and I was always quite, I was quite pleased when I found it. I didn't, I wasn't sort of really into mounts back in those days, and that was still back in the days when mounts weren't sort of separate. You couldn't just have hundreds and hundreds of them because you had to carry each one around in your bag with you and because of that it was more difficult to find multiple mounts and and sort of have multiple mounts as well so finding that one was always quite it was it was good for me i, I really did like that it was uh, something that i particularly liked i seen him sneaking up then he was just sneaking up ever so quietly and carefully and i managed to see him right there at this in this at the side of it another tin vein so you can see if they're orange then you know the sort of the level that you can uh, successfully mine. However, oh, there's another one there. Um, like the iron, we could mine it, but we were we only got uh, nuggets instead of actually getting the iron. Now, the, the reason that they've done that is so that people don't have to spend hours and hours hunting around for the right type of ore in order to be able to successfully level up their profession. It's, it's a way to do it a little bit quicker and quite frankly I think it's an it's an excellent idea and it was it was wasn't before time it was it really is an absolutely wonderful idea that they've done this um, it allows you to level up wherever you are you can go and if you're in if you're busy doing Burning Crusade stuff in Outland, you don't have to come back here to mine copper in order to level up your mining skill. You can just carry straight on from where you were in Outland and just mine the stuff there until such time as you've built up enough. And I think that's a really good idea. It is a good idea. It's still, it's still time consuming. To, it's time consuming to level up any leveling profession. Mining, though, does tend to be a little bit faster. You can just go and buy a whole load of stuff when you're mining. Um, and smelt it instead. I could go and buy a load of copper ore off the auction house and smelt that, and that would like level up my mining skill really, really quickly. I could get all. I can get very, very high in mining skill without ever actually having lifted an iron pick, uh, a pick at all. So we've got twenty more of those. That it's makes three pieces of iron ore. We don't have anything in engineering that is going to allow us to use any of that, but we are getting a nice lot of ores and stuff kicking around. Now, I'm going to ignore the rest of these because both of those are done. We want the Ogre's Monocle and Abercrombie's Crate, and those are both in the Ogre's Mound. So we're going to carry on over there, get to the Ogre's Mound, and take the battle to the Ogre's. Pick up those two items that are down in there, and hopefully that's all we're going to need to worry about. Now, before we actually get into the Ogre's Mound, there is one other thing that I would like to do. And I would like to take a look in here. I'd like to go in there and I would just like to show you the bit in there. It's a little bit different to everything else in this zone. I mean, when I say a little bit different, I mean it's like completely, completely, totally different from anything else that is in this zone. It's absolutely fantastic. I do like it. It's, um, it's a little bit of history. It's a little bit of World of Warcraft history right there for you to go and take a look at. And where is, I think that's the track there, isn't it? There's the track. Fairly easy to find, actually, now that I think about it. There's a quest there. It doesn't... Uh, the quest isn't anything to do up in here. At least I don't think it is. Oh, there's two quests. I don't think they're anything to do with this up here. Now, I said to you in last episode, I think, that you've got this area in the middle of this zone. And there's a few other zones that have got an area like this as well. There used to be these giant dragons that would come out of here. And they were a 40... It would take a 40-man raid team to bring them down. And this was before I started playing the game. I never actually seen the drag. I think I may have actually seen the dragons sat there, but I never got involved with any um, attempt to bring them down or anything like that. You just had these gates. Now, this is completely different here. Look at it. This isn't what you expect to see in the middle of Duskwood, right? This, look. It's absolutely fine. This is this is pure elven type stuff. This is this is this is um, harking back to the ancient days of the elves. Not not even new stuff. This this is real old stuff. This is, 
and I mean it's it's absolutely fantastic I really do like it you got that huge great big portal and there used to be a dragon that would turn up outside here and do stuff you've got a well over there I don't know if that was actually used for anything in the past there used to be some tailoring things where you had to go and stand you had to be like by a moon well in order to be able to craft stuff and I think they did away with that as well which is a bit of a shame Right, I'm going to take a little drink and I will meet you just on the outskirts of the encampment thing over there. Just over the over the ridge. We'll come back out of here. So it's just my uh, just a quick little look at this little area in here. I believe really, it is quite peaceful here. It's, it's sort of a nice place to escape to. Right, we are leaving the area and we're going to come back into Duskwood, the dark forbidding mysterious Duskwood, leaving the ancient elven ruins. And continuing on our way so I never really got into the elven backstory and I I can appreciate it and I can appreciate the ancient traditions and um, the druidic nature of it being in touch with being in touch with nature and sort of communing with the forest spirits and so on but I, it never really it's never really grabbed me and I, I don't know why because I kind of like the I do like the whole idea of it but the feel of playing an elf has just never really appealed to me very much. And I ge I'm genuinely sort of confused by this because I've always sort of quite appreciated nature and um, appreciated being outdoors and so on and so forth. And so, yeah, the, well, not just not necessarily just being outdoors, but appreciated wild. wild. Uh, any Anywhere wild, I've always really appreciated. And so it seems, I, I just don't know why, but this... The elves have just don't connect with them. That's why I really, I very rarely play an elf. Um, most of my characters are actually human because I connect with the human storyline. I like the human storyline. I like the medieval feel to the towns and the cities that they build. It's, it really appeals to me personally. Um, I guess partly because I sort of grow up... I've grown up in a town... Well, I've grown up near several towns that are kind of like it in appearance. You know, I, I, I live next to a town that half the houses in it are over 300 years old. And some of them have been built up on and are a bit newer, and some of them are a bit older. And then you've got the castle in town that I think actually the stone of the castle at the moment, um, I think that was built like, is it 800 years ago? Might only have been 700 years ago. It's not particularly old, but um, it's been there for at least, it might, uh, yeah, I think it's about 700 years, I think the castle is, because the original castle was made out of wood and that has been there for a, a few hundred years more than that so the original mound is a lot older but the actual stone castle that is in the middle of our town is only i think it's only like six or seven hundred years old so by castle standards it's relatively new but um yeah so the the feel of um the towns and that for humans they, they just generally appeal to me anyway I'm, I'm talking far too much and we need to carry on so watch your dods Hail Paladin. Care to lend a hand for the people of Darkshire? There's a huge ogre mound just down the hill from here. The Splinter Fist ogres usually keep to themselves, but they've got a bad habit of attacking travellers. Just the other day, I saw one drag off a poor man's horse for food. He was lucky it left him behind. The Night Watch wants to only risk its few members in the defence of more immediate threats, me included. But if you kill some of these ogres for me, I'll pay you for your deed. Except. The alliance. Right. Um... Go and see Apprentice what can Fess, I do for you? a deadly vine, and the Jorgen Worgen. Um, hang on, what did he say? What's, what's the beginning bit? Common enemy. Lord Harris has sent me here to collect reagents. Our work cannot be delayed. We need large amounts of corpse weed for Master Harris concoctions. It's difficult to obtain, but we can't let our supply dwindle. Corpse weed is tough stuff to tangle with. The plant will get you before you get it if you're not careful. But if you'd like to help out, I'll eagerly pay you for you and eagerly pay you for any you gather yourself. You'll find plenty of it all over the Jorgen stead to the southeast. I accept. My kinsmen at Ravenhill are concerned with curing the feral worgen in these forests. The condition itself cannot be lifted, but sanity can be restored to those not too far gone. While most here have proven beyond help, we keep an eye out for those that retain vestiges of their... Uh, retain... Is it vestiges or vestiges? of their minds, attachments to their old lives. I've seen a lone worgen lurking the Jorgen farmstead, digging in a pile of dirt between the buildings. Could you check out that pile and see if he's left anything? Let the light of the new moon guide you. Okay, we'll go and take a look. So first of all, we've got the Jorgen worgen down here in the Jorgen farmstead. 
and we'll just jump straight down and we've got to take out the corpse weeds and then there's something to check behind these as well and then once we've done this we will then head off to the ogres and we will take the battle to them got a couple of we've got to take out 15 ogres we've got to get the ogres monocle and we've got to get the um the crate for abercrombie so we, we've we've got our work cut out basically go and take that one out there and how many have we got so we've got three of five we just need two more it should be fairly simple we've got a mound of dirt over here and the dead pig there mound of loose dirt oh well he didn't like that right so what what exactly are we supposed to do here um oh that's just that's ready for turning so Apparently we can only just we, we can just go and look at it, but we can't actually do anything to it because if we do that He comes out and he wallops us and then he disappears. So there's nothing else that we can do there We just have to go and turn that quest in Let me lob a shield at that one over there Take care of it. So one more corpse weed we need and then we're done. It's that one there on our way out Just like that and wallop it's quite easy to kill these at the moment because, I mean, we're level 23 and the surrounding items are level 22s now. So we are well on, we're sort of heading well above the level of this area. Which means that once we finish here, we'll be, I'm going to do all of the quests here, see. Oh, and by the way, the, the thing that I'm riding, the, the, the Gron, look at it. Look at this thing, it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Is that not the most awesome mount you've ever seen? Hang on a minute. Let me uh, think it's that. There we go. How awesome is that mount? How cool does that look? I'm, let me just go up here so that I can give you a better look. I can move the camera a bit further down. There you go. Look at that thing. <laughs> He's absolutely fantastic, isn't he? Absolutely fantastic. I really do like that one. Awesome. Right, let's go over here, and I want to control Z to get that back. I'm going to come down off of this guy, because he's just going to terrify poor Ain't Apprentice Fett. So we'll do the one. Deadly Vine first. Do you have the Corpse Weed? I thank you, Paladin. I'm sure the Worgen that may be returned to sanity with the potion this will make would thank you too. So we get the Cloak of Sanity, which is exactly the same as the cloak we're wearing. It just looks a bit different. Uh, reputation with the Guild... Oh, we're now friendly with Gilneas, that's what it is. Sounds like a close call, but he ran off without harming you further. He might still be fighting it. Master Harris must know. Master Harris will know will want to know this immediately. Here, take this package of corpse weed down the road to the camp at Raven Hill. Tell him what we saw at the Organstead. And tell it well, just tell him what we saw. Okay. Uh, except we will run that down there. But before we do that, we are going to head into the Ogre Mound and we're going to take the battle to the ogres. We've got to kill fifteen ogres while we're in here. We need to find the ogre's monocle, and we also need to find Abercrombie's crate, which is in here somewhere. So we've got a lot that we need to get done in here. These are level 23 creatures, and they're actually the same level as us, because we're level 23. And they seem to be dropping with relative ease, so we could take several on all at once if we were able to. There is some ore over here. We're going to go and grab that. I will keep grabbing all of the ore that I can so that we can keep acquiring some cash because as soon as we reach level 40, we'll be wanting our fast mount um, riding speed, which is actually really cool. There is a black raptor. I love the raptors. I was very pleased when I was able to get the raptors. I've only acquired these more recently. They've not, I've not had them for all that long. So we get that guy, and if I can, I want to taunt that one all the way. He's, he's too far away for me to taunt. He's going to run away now. Oh, no, he's not. We'll get them both. That's good. We can fight both of them. We can take them both out nice and quickly. And, oh, there's the crate. And then the ogre's monocle, I think, is going to be down inside there. So we'll have to go in there to get that one. That shouldn't. That's not going to be much of an issue anyway. So there is Abercrombie's crate. We head down in here. We are going to run out of time. I think what we'll do is we'll go to Raven Hill. So that we can turn in that next quest and then from there we will go back to the inn and we will call it a day. So um, we should be able to reach level 24. So we've leveled up twice today which is pretty good. And take this one down. I've had several people say to me that I've inspired them to start playing their own characters 
but playing it to enjoy the leveling experience rather than racing to complete everything as quickly as possible and I'm really pleased about that. that that really does please me I'm absolutely delighted to find out that people are wanting to give this a go because it's something that I particularly like doing with the leveling experience I leveled my I sort of power leveled my first one I went through as quickly as I possibly could um, and then that was it I didn't do any more oh there's the ogre's monocle right so we've collected the ogre's monocle um, enjoying the journey because there's so much about this game that is, is literally designed for you to enjoy the journey not it's not all about the destination it's about the journey and if you can remember that while you're playing it it really does open up a whole depth of extra gameplays go and find the obscure quest hubs and give them a go try out and, and read through the storyline follow the little storylines all over the place some of them are absolute gems they're absolutely amazing little storylines and there's ones that they've just kind of chucked in all over the place and you, you like you go and help a little zone and it has no connection with the outside world anyway whatsoever is just a unique little quest hub all on its own and that's it it's, it's just done this there's no sort of outside rewards other than enjoyment of the storyline um and so i that, that's what i particularly like about it I, I love doing that kind of thing um my main character is the one that i i tend to go through everything i've done just about every storyline every quest that is available in the game on my main character um not from the um newest expansion i haven't done everything everything on there yet so not by a long way i don't have flying on that one yet um but i'm slowly getting through it and it's something that i do intend to do um so with this character i absolutely no way i'm going to be using any heirlooms there's no i'm just not going to be sending heirlooms to this character that's not going to happen because that increases the experience that you gain and causes you to level faster this series is not about power leveling a character we're not about achieving end game okay that's that's not what this if you if you want to see people playing end game and getting to end game as quickly as possible there are hundreds of people that already do that and have plenty of videos showing it how it's done so i'm, I'm not after that that's not something that i'm trying to do here what i'm trying to achieve with this is to enjoy the journey and take you with me on the journey all the way through so we're it's going to be a very very long running series as you can imagine it's um the only time i'm not going to repeatedly run dungeons as part of this series because i know a lot of people will do that as well they, they go over and over they go through dungeons over and over again so we've unlocked a new dungeon there and they will run loads and loads of dungeons in order to power level because you get so much more xp running a dungeon than you do just running around killing a few mobs and questing um each time if you do the new dungeon if you like you do a fresh dungeon you get a whole load of quests in there that give you like a massive amount of xp plus you get all the kills and stuff as well um you can power level quite quickly just running dungeons it's a really really fast way to level up um so i won't be doing that i will sometimes do a dungeon if we've done a particular storyline that requires us to do a dungeon quest to finish the storyline then I might go in and do that dungeon. But other than that, I don't have any intention of running a whole load of dungeons. It's not something that I want to do as part of this. I don't think it was going to work very well. I am going to try and take down all four of these at once. So let's throw down that one and bam. Okay, this is working quite well. This paladin is awesome. He really is. Four of them and I barely broke into a sweat. That was, that's awesome. I really do, I really do like this guy. So we'll taunt that one and we'll throw a judgment on that one and then I'll throw the shield up onto that one over there. Put down my consecrate and start attacking these again. Now I am actually in trouble now if I drink a potion. And still in trouble, but I'm okay. Um, let's just heal ourselves up a bit. There we go. I could always use divine shield, which like makes you invincible for a little while. I could just do that. Um, I'm not going to. Right, what have we got now? We've got the Swift Love Bird. This is quite possibly the ugliest mount that I have, which is why it's in my favourite selection. Because it is the ugliest mount that I've got. Look at this thing. It's absolutely hideous. It really is. It's disgusting. <laughs> I love it. It's brilliant. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it looks like some sort of naked vulture. 
It's absolutely hideous. Right, anyway, so we've got our naked turkey that we're riding around on. I saw you drop a few of them from here. Nice work. Here's your reward on behalf of the Night's Watch. We get 14 silver for that. That's not too bad at all. Now, we can turn in our quest. We've got one quest. Oh, that's all the way over there. That's quite a way to go. But it would be useful because then we can get the flight point. So we'll run down this way. I'm going to run down that way because we have now run out of time. And then we need to... Actually, that's going to be it. So all I'm going to do today is I'm going to run down there get that flight point and then half straight back to the inn. We will turn in all of these quests uh, tomorrow and we're not going to worry about turning in the delivery to Master Harris just yet. We're going to keep that one until next time. One thing I am seriously considering doing though is from here run back out to the trader that's out there and pick up one each of those greens that he's got because we made a little bit of cash out of that. That was actually a profitable enterprise. We sold those for I think it was seven gold fifty each and we bought them for like a gold each, if that. So I think we may go and try and do that again. We'll take another look. He may also have another one of those potions. Um, but that's really all that we got time for today. So if you enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That what would be awesome. Take We're going travel. to fly now over Duskwood. And I did say that I would go and do this, but we've already gotten this far, so... There's that great big tree. I don't actually know what those trees are called. There's four of them, I believe, in the world. And I'm not sure what they're called. You've got one here in uh, the Twilight Grove right there. Then you've got another one up here. Um, where is the other one? Oh, it's in the Hinterlands. You've got one there in the Hinterlands. Then you have another one over here. Now... I'm pretty sure there's one in... Oh, no, there's, there's one here. There's, there's one there. It's not in dusk, in dark... It's in Moonglade. There's one there in Moonglade. And then where's the other one? The other one... It's not in Silith. I think it's in Feralas, actually. I think the last one is in Feralas there. So you got four of these. you got four of these. Great big trees. And where... Is it round there? I think it's round there somewhere. It might be down there. I can't remember now. It's been such a long time since I've got... you got these four of them all around the world. And... I don't think there was actually anything ever done with them. I think they were kind of a, um, like, it was something that was put in the game, but it was never actually fully utilized. And to me, that seems a bit of a shame. It's, it's, it, it really does. It feels like a, a wasted opportunity almost. Um, but yeah, we, we're not going to worry about that. So we're just going to quickly run out here and see if we can find that guy. This is the forest rider. Very much like the lovebird, but, um, purple and not quite so naked looking. Um, it looks like he's actually still got his feathers on in purple. And he looks a little bit better than... This is one of the Dark Moon ones, actually, I think. Um, he looks a bit better than that Swift Love. That Swift Love Bird is, without a doubt, the ugliest mount that there is in the game. If any of you know the mount that you think is actually uglier... I know that Gron that I was riding around on um, isn't the most attractive of fellows, but I still think that the Naked Love Bird thing is uh, a lot uglier than the Gron. So... If anybody knows of any mounts that you think are genuinely uglier to look at than that Naked Lovebird thing, let us know. Let us know which... Get in the comments and tell us what you think the most hideous looking mount in all of the game is. I'd really be interested to know. He's got no greens. We had greens from him, but he's got none here. Uh, so we'll get one of those and one of those eight silver for the Holy Protection Potion. I've listed it for like 200 gold again. And that healing, we can use that now. You know what? I think we're going to buy those. Uh, I said we're going to buy them. Apparently we're not going to buy them. If I do that and I speak to him again. I think the other guy that just ran past actually bought them from him before we could. So we will sell a few of these items here. It's just these, the trash items that we're not going to do. So we don't want anything with melon juice, the mutton chops. Nope, we don't want to do anything with that. Um, those we want to keep. Those we're just going to keep. The brocade cloak there. And you can, what you can do is you click them and you look at them and you can see if they're any good. Right, I don't like the look at that, so we can sell it. The rawhide gloves, nope, they're not really going to do anything. Lesser mana potions, worthless rawhide boots. I mean, I like the whole rawhide approach. You could sort of get a full kit of rawhide stuff, I suppose. I don't know if it would actually be worth selling. I suppose we could try. Because if you take those as well, the rawhide pants, you look at that. You get you get the full rawhide set. They do actually look pretty good. 
Okay, I'm convinced. We're going to keep the rawhide stuff and try to sell it as, um, and like get a set of it to sell. And that one there is the other cloak that we bought. No need to get rid of that one, I don't think. So if you reset, that's the cloak that we got at the moment. I think that one blends in better to the forest, so we'll sell. Uh, the ring, we don't need to worry about for a minute. Yeah, let's get rid of those. And so that, we lose, we lose. Uh, we don't, we've actually only got one ring on at the moment. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Got one ring wearing at the moment, so we can keep that one. And then the rest of this stuff is all downgrades. So we sell this stuff here. Goblin jumper cables, we just bought those. Yeah. So we can sell these items here. And we forgot to eat stuff today, but we're going to try and sell those three on the auction house. Okay, we're done. That's it. Right, I'm going to head back to the inn, and then I will meet you in Stormwind in our next episode. And we will go straight to the auction house, deal with whatever we're going to deal with there. And then once we're done with um, that, we are going to try and just see if we can level up a little bit of stuff with our engineering skill. We've got a load of different things that we can make now. We can do the coarse blasting powder, so we ought to be able to get that up to at least level 150. But anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.